But one thing I definitely want to ask about is your most recent download festival performance, which I checked out, was a fascinating decision, which I was so blown away by because you played an entire set of unheard songs off a record no one had listened to yet, as far mm. as I could gather. And I don't know that I've ever seen anyone do that. I don't think that's been done before, honestly. And it was, as an audience member, it was it was very fascinating because every three, you know, couple of songs you'd think, yeah, of course, he's got a new record, he's going to be playing those. And then I'm sure we're going to get something that we know and something that's familiar. And it would, as the set went on, we started going, I don't think it's come. I don't think we're going to get anything we know. And you're I'm teetering between like being f furious, but also like, this is so impressive. And actually what was, what was really impressive was the songs really landed from that record in a live context. They, they, there was something about them that it did translate, even though you didn't know them, which I think is kind of rare in the rock world, because generally, depending on how good your sound engineer is, new songs don't necessarily translate with strength. But in that case, they, they certainly did. What led to that decision? And how was that experience for you? How did you feel before going and say, knowing what you were about to do? for that set mm, that's a i feel like we could have made a documentary about that set because there was so much that went into it and it broke all of my own rules because you're exactly right about like new material at gigs you know it's the last thing anyone wants to hear at a live show <laughs> is a new song even if it's fucking living on a prayer you know <laughs> We, it's so rare that it goes over, right? And even if it does go over, people are not receptive to the idea. I went to see uh, Mastodon play at the Underworld when they before they became absolutely huge. And they played, you know, um, a couple of tracks of what I think went on to be like their, like maybe Leviathan, was that the big record for Mastodon? Anyway, it was before then. It was before they really broke. And they were like, we're going to play a couple of new tunes, you know, songs that would go on to be their like immortal classics. Um, and you know we didn't realize we were in the presence of greatness and I remember after like one new tune people kind of suffered it and then they were like we're gonna do another new one and one guy at the front of the crowd went he said pay attention we like the old stuff <laughs> but this I was I agreed with this person and even as a mm. musician myself you don't, no one goes to the show to hear new stuff. And we were always in the band. And as a solo artist, I was always leery of, I'd limit it to like maybe one. You might get new, one new song. And even then people would immediately leave for the bar, right? And and plus I sort of had a rule as a solo artist that um, I think when I came out as a solo artist, people weren't expecting me to play Ruben songs, right? Which is really nice that they came anyway and bought tickets anyway, expecting to hear essentially new stuff you know they'd had the record but whatever but th that was never my intention because i really loved those songs and i worked hard on them and so i, I always wanted to play ruben's songs at, you know at least one if not two or three because you know that's why people are here and i like them and you know the, the guys playing in the band with me jump at the chance to play you know those particularly the drummers they like to get stuck into or what guys do yeah yeah and and so I I made a little promise to myself and to my audience that I'd never do a show without at least one Ruben song. I thought that would be really rude, you know. And and I broke all those promises with that download set because because and there was a reason for it because we had been trying to look at like what label was going to produce the record where we were going to go back with Big Scary Monsters or we were going to try and work with other people and there was a lot of negotiation and the, the the record went through a long gestation period and and one of my managers quit and then a lot of things fell through we were supposed to release one or maybe even two singles early that year so the right. idea for download was that when we went to download people would be familiar with the material right and they would have they would have heard one or at least two tracks that we would then bring <laughs> out all right and and then I started rehearsing with um, Jen, my extra guitarist, because it was clear that the material would need another guitar. And I didn't want to um, waste her time on any songs that I could just do with Jacko, right? That, that could just be guitar, bass and drums, which basically meant the rest of my back catalogue. So we ended up concentrating on the new album with Jen. And then it came to the crunch point where we, we were rehearsing as if we were going to play all this new stuff that people would have heard. 
But then the singles got delayed. So I was left in this position where I was like, fuck, you know, I rehearsed all this new material and no one's heard any of it. <laughs> and which way do you go? Do you lead into that? I had two I had two options. I could either tell Jen, Jen, you've wasted your fucking time. You know, me and Jacko are just going to go out there and play all the fucking same bullshit we played last year because we'd done Download Pilot last year. I could do another boring, you know, greatest hits with no nothing new on the table and people would say, oh, Jamie Lemon was also there and it wouldn't be anything. Or I could go all the way the other way get Jen in, present everyone with this new sound, you know, a new look band and just play all new stuff. Because then if it was terrible or if it was amazing, people would talk about it. Even if people were like, man, Jamie Lemon took a big swing and whiffed it real hard, you know, <laughs> like absolutely died. That would be better than just, <laughs> yeah, and Jamie Lemon, you know, doing the same old Future's Dead shit off Devolver. Uh, so I knew something big would happen either way. And so I thought, fuck it, you know, I'm just going to play completely new stuff, which, you know, I swore that I would walk out if a band ever did that to me. But there you go. Everybody's got to try it <laughs> once. And then what happened was what I was not expecting, even in my wildest dreams of confidence, because I'm quite confident and I was confident in the material. People started singing along to these new songs that they'd never heard. I mean, yeah. you were there. I'm not imagining this. They were no, no. By the by, like let's say the third chorus, the last chorus in whatever song, they were singing the words, and I, yeah. I just thought, you know, it was a real um, valediction, uh, vindication of like, yeah, these are straight uh, good songs, good enough to go over first time, and the reaction yeah. of the crowd was as if I'd done the greatest hits, and so I thought, wow. And the only shame is, here's the sting in the tail is that I thought fuck this proves it you know I've got lightning in a bottle this new set of songs really is going to do what I want it to do which is like massively translate reach a broader audience you know go over if it can go over this instantly with a group of hardcore yeah. metalheads you know I've got a fucking platinum record on my hands <laughs> it came out no one bought it no one listened to it F waste of fucking time so for that beautiful moment after that download set, I was walking on air and I was convinced I was going to buy a slightly bigger house with all the record sales. <laughs> it wasn't to be, but that was a glorious moment. Yeah, that's fair. And I think what helped it probably was that you didn't, after the first song, say, by the way, everyone, I'm going to be playing a bunch of new songs. I hope you're okay with that. You just went and went and went. And, and I think that's why it worked, because the risk is, we'll never know, but if you had said that, that there may have been some thinning of the crowd, but everyone's just like, you know what? This is a thing. We're in for this. <laughs> I was really, I genuinely was, ex what I expected was for a lot of people to leave. I expected like a hardcore to stick with it and be polite, and, and I would have been happy with that. But no one left. I thought there was going to be a mass exodus, but there just wasn't. It was wonderful, and I'm glad you were there. That's one of the high points of my career, if you can call it a career. That's cool. And to link back to something you said earlier about, yeah, you, you don't go to a gig hoping to hear songs you don't know. However, what is interesting is if that is the first time you hear a song is live, when you later on hear it on a record, it takes you back immediately to that live performance. Mm. It's like a sort of time capsule. I, I found that years ago, I saw, this is oh, like 22 years ago, I saw AFI at Reading Festival. Now, anytime I hear this record, I'm back as like a 14-year-old in that crowd listening to it. And that is mind-blowing. And yet still, if I would go to a gig, I'd be like, oh, I hope I know all the songs. <laughs> like it's, it's, we it's kind beautiful. of fight ourselves. We do. I, I, I've, yeah. Um, and, and that, that concept of people's expectations versus what you're giving them is something that I've butted up against my whole career. You know, people are, as soon as you do the one thing, people are, they're, they're expecting a repeat every time. And then if they don't get it, they can get like literally competitive. I, you know, towards wow. the end of the band, I had some, this guy like break into my dressing room and like grab hold of me because I didn't play the songs he wanted to hear. You know, it was, it's, it can get, physically threatening the audience's expectations mental. hey it's not as it's not as uncommon as it happened on a few occasions man so yeah it makes it very difficult to be an artist god listen to me <laughs> in my floral dressing gown 
<laughs> no, it's totally fair. I have to imagine that kind of experience wouldn't make you go, Jesus Christ, I better play that song every gig from now on because I, I, otherwise I might get hit in the face. Yeah, or okay. let's or let's jack this band in a fuck all of y'all, which is what I did. Yeah, yeah some some kind of rip cord is going to get pulled. Yeah, uh, Jesus.